What's going on YouTube? This is Luke with Endless Entrepreneurs. Just coming to you with another video here Friday night. I uh, just thought I'd give you a June sales update since we're almost almost a third of the way through the month. I haven't done one yet. Uh, just did my May recap not too long ago, but just wanted to make sure I was getting back on the schedule with these and giving you guys an update of how things were going on the 100K challenge. Uh, for those of you new to my channel, I am a part-time eBay seller and a full-time um, corporate finance analyst. So I build my business in my spare time um, and I work full-time at like a, kind of a standard nine to five and I track that progress here on this channel. Um, just uh, I like to do these videos every so often to update this 100K challenge and show you kind of how it's going, listing sales, what's been selling for me. Um, I specialize in men's clothing. If you're if you're new to my channel, aren't sure, uh, I sell pretty much anything in the men's clothing genre. Uh, the format of these videos is I like to upfront. I'll, I'll save kind of Q and A and live chat till the end. Um, but I like to jump in. I'll show you what's sold. I have like an activity tracker I like to go through with each, you know, how many things I've listed, what's sold, average sale price. And then I'll go through 15 unique items that have sold during the last time period. So I've done my last video in hopes to kind of share some brand knowledge and things like that that I like to sell and what's uh, selling currently on uh, eBay. So let me uh, just check the chat real quick, make sure everything looks all right as far as sound goes. Uh, thank you. We have Terry in the chat. She is a moderator, graciously uh, volunteers and does that. So I really appreciate Terry being here. How you doing? <clears throat> and hi to everyone tonight for stopping in. I am going to jump right into the content here and then we'll chat a little bit at the end. So let me uh, get ready here. I will share my screen. All right, starting to share screen now. So let's jump over to sales for the month here. So this is sales from June 1st to current throw. So through tonight <clears throat> um, at $1,113, uh, up about 15% compared to the same time period. Um, well, I guess it was compared to the 23rd through the 31st of May. Um, <clears throat> so this is still down. I mean, I'm up until last month when the summer slowdown started to hit, I was averaging about $200, $210 in sales per day. Um, and it's about half of that now. Last month was about half of that. It seems like I'm starting to ramp up a little bit. I've been making some adjustments. I'm running promoted listings on my recent bulk purchase, which has helped ignite a little bit of sales. Uh, I've been running some different sales just in general on my whole store. I've been checking keywords. I've been listing more unique items, more short tail items, just trying to mix things up to kind of tough out through the summer dry spell just because that's it is what it is. Um, so I'm just trying to make the best of it I can, soak up what sales I can now, knowing that the back half of the year is going to be a really sale heavy, you know, awesome time of year. So just trying to get through to there and keep building and growing. Um, so this is what it's at. This is the reality. Now I'll switch over to the spreadsheet that I like to use. Um, so you can see this, the total is slightly off, I think. Um, yeah, so mine's about $20 higher and I'm not exactly sure why the timing of that every time I do these videos it's always off like one sale I don't know if it's because it's waiting on a return that happened or if it's a sale that came through and this doesn't register on eBay but like I just updated this five minutes for the video so but it's 20 bucks off but I mean that's where we're at so basically a little over 1100 bucks for the month uh, if you haven't seen the spreadsheet before you can get it for free uh, it's on my website at endlessentrepreneurs.com just go to the resource page you can download it uh, if you're looking for something to track your business with um, what I didn't do is I didn't plug in my items listed here. Uh, I just want to show you kind of the sales so far. I need to go through my notebook. I keep track of my notebook each day of what I list. I do need to populate this, so I apologize that's not up to date. But typically I would up to date, you know, each day I usually put the items listed, the items sold, the average sale price of those items, or I mean the total value and the average sale price. And then I always keep track of the items I source. I haven't purchased any this month yet. Uh, I am going to go out sourcing tomorrow, so there will be some haul videos uh, coming. And kind of just getting back to normal routine, getting this thing populated. Um, it, this really keeps track, in my opinion, of all the key drivers of a reseller's business, especially a clothing reseller. Um, and then at the bottom, I just have totals here, so you can see um, I sold 50 items this month. Uh, for a total of about a little over $1,100. You can see my average sell price has dropped from last month by about $2. I think it was like about $2 per, It was I was at like twenty-four sixty something I think last month. I'm trying to get to 28, but I have accepted that during the summer kind of time period, I'm gonna have to accept some slower sales. I'm um, also going to, with my new bulk purchase, I'm, the price point on those is like between 16 and $22. So that's gonna be well below the 28 mark, which I can, you know, I can deal with. Uh, that's just the nature of what I did. But the buy cost of that bulk buy was $1.15 per item. So I'm still making the margin I wanna make. Um, I have my kind of my goals in here. So the monthly goals, 
Um, try to list 350 items per month, trying to sell 250. So well behind that pace actually. Um, and I like to get to 7,000 this time of year, but I'm just not on pace at all for that. Um, that's just the reality. And then here's year to date. So co coming up on that $30,000 mark for the year, uh, should well cross that this month. Hopefully we'll land around 32 or 33. I'm hoping for some ramp up the back half of this month. If I do that, that'll put me in a really good position in the back half of the year to make up for you know kind of the off pace that I am right now. Still think 100K is very achievable just because of the cyclicalness of eBay selling. So enough of me rambling with that. Let me jump over to the core content we have here. Uh, I know this is what kind of adds a lot of value for everyone. So I'm gonna get that thing away. <clears throat> so a lot of the items I'm about to show you guys, they're gonna be a lot more bread and butter type items compared to um, a lot of times I have some kind of home run ones. I do have one big home run item and it's, I save it to the end. So definitely hang around and, and check it out. It's, it's probably the biggest sale I've had in quite a while for a single item. I'm um, pretty pumped about it and haven't had a return. It sold quite a while ago. So I think I'm in the clear with that. Um, but in any case, I'm going to go through and talk about what I got it for and kind of, you know, what it sold for. This sold for full price is a Charles Tierwit. Um, it's the weekend style, non iron, extra slim fit dress shirt. I uh, sold it for $23.99. It was on sale for 25% off. This actually sold this morning. Here is your tag to be on the lookout for. Um, these will sit for a little bit. It's not like they're a super fast sell through. Uh, they're definitely a nichier type dress shirt, um, but I find them quite often and they move for me. Um, so and usually I get like 22 to 28 ish, I would say, is the range uh, that I expect to get for these when I pick them up. I was in this for four bucks and I went for first class. Uh, so we've got, this is a uh, Ralph Lauren, and I include some of these because these are like my bread and butter ones, but I literally just listed this like two or three days ago, and I just started getting back into my normal listing routines, um, not listing my bulk order as much, and this sold for, is on sale, sold for $18.74, I mean this for, I bought this with a bulk lot actually, um, it was a local reseller, I was getting rid of his clothing, and uh, I bought these, this was, I was in this for three bucks. Uh, so three dollars and what we'll go first class um, so decent flip there this is kind of those bread and butter everyday type of you know sales that you need to make to keep your business from moving especially on the slow time so i still pick up ralph lauren as long as it is a dress shirt it has the body <laughs> sorry about that uh, so we've got levi's here's another real standard item now uh, these are women's jeans uh, they're the super the two super low i do like to pick up this line when i can find it um, this sold for $22.99. It was on sale. I don't know why it's not showing that it was on sale. But it sold for $22.99. I'm in these for five bucks. Um, these did go flat rate for six bucks. Um, so you know, decent flip there for at, you know that $22, $23 price point. Um, I can live with that and definitely be on the lookout for these. Uh, this I actually just posted on Instagram a little bit ago. Um, I was, I, mean, I guess it was big star jeans, but I've been experimenting with this photo style here, just as the front photo. Uh, these are citizens of humanity. Uh, these are men's jeans. Uh, these sold for uh, $26.99, I think they're on sale. I was running a 30% off sale to try and ignite some sales the other day because things are really slow. Um, normally you can get over 30 for these, especially being men's. Um, but I was still happy to move them for almost 27 bucks. I'm in them for five and they uh, ship for uh, flat rate for six. All right, just another bread and butter standard. These are Levi's 501. Uh, they have the button fly on them. They're like a dark blue denim jean. Um, let me show you some more close up tags here. These were 30 by 29, so definitely a smaller size. Let me see if I can show you the button fly. Um, so yeah, I'm in these for five bucks. I took a best offer of twenty dollars. I like to get like the mid twenties for these normally, but again, sales have been slow, so I've been taking a few dollars less just to keep things moving. Uh, so still decent profit even after fees and stuff. You know, almost tripling my money, so not too bad. All right, here's another bread and butter type item, Ralph Lauren, uh, just a classic fit. This happens to be a three X tall. The tall and the big sizes sell great. Um, for me, especially in Ralph Lauren with the pony. Uh, this was like a purple kind of like a micro check. Uh, let me see if I can find the tag for you guys here. Uh, and this sold, took a best offer of $19.99. It was on sale. I'm not sure why it's not showing that it was on sale, but I took a best offer of $19.99 in it for four bucks, first class to ship. So real happy with that. This is a pretty interesting one. Um, occasionally I find these new attached Columbia. We do have a Columbia store, or it's not a Columbia store, it's a couple mall stores at South Columbia near us. Um, and I do find these occasionally in the thrift stores, new with tags. 
Uh, so sold this for 19.99. It was on sale, 20% off. Sold for full price the other day. Uh, it's just got a cool fish pattern on it. Nothing you know too crazy, but in it for four bucks. So very happy with that flip. Went first class, very lightweight item. All right, here is Orvis. You can see the white background. Uh, for me, that means that I've had this item for you know well over a year, basically. Um, and you know that's I well I would say about eight months minimum. Probably closer to a year I've had this. Uh, this sold, it was on sale, sold for full price $26.99 as the Orvis Signature Collection. Uh, it's just a green plaid dress shirt. <sighs> I don't the other guys. I went out on a date with Shannon tonight, had a, had a beer or two, I guess two beers, so I'm a little sleepy right now. Um, and this is definitely past my bedtime. My sleep schedule has been a little weird the last couple of days. Still been waking up early, but going to bed later. Uh, but again, anyways, so here's Orvis. It's a we have an Orvis store near us, and they are all over the country. Um, so it's definitely a niche brand where people really know they're looking for this very specifically. Usually when they're looking for Orvis. Um, but again, I was in this for four bucks, you know, eight to twelve months ago, and got twenty six ninety nine out of it, which is fits right in with my long tail seller model. All right, these are Lucky Brand. It was really funny because a couple sales update videos ago, I made a haul. I was like, man, I stopped picking up women's Lucky jeans. They just don't seem to sell for me. And I was just kind of complaining and ranted about it. Ooh. Oh, I keep yawning. I'm really sorry, guys. And um, I was kind of ranting. And then all of a sudden, they started selling. I sold this pair for $22.99. It was on sale, full price. Sold another pair. I'm not sure if I include it in this video later on or not, but sold another pair for like $22 or $23. Bucks. So they're starting to move. Um, I don't know why now. Apparently, I just had to complain about it. But these are the Lola boot cut line. Um, so just you know, some Lucky Brand jeans, you know, pretty standard bread and butter stuff. In these for five bucks. Happy to sell them for that low twenties range. Um, these did go flat rate. Uh, here's the vintage Gitman Bros. Um, if you aren't familiar with Gitman Brothers. Uh, it's a good brand to pick up. Sometimes it can be a slower movie. It's similar to Orvis where it's very niche. -y. Like people have to be looking for it. Uh, you can tell from the tags. This is one of the older tags. That's why I put vintage in the title. Um, there are some older shirts that go for quite a bit of money. Hmm. Ronnie over on Hearts Pickers does a really good job of talking about the difference between the tags and um, what's vintage versus non-vintage. Uh, I'm pretty positive this is. I try to authenticate the best I can before I put that even in my title. Um, I find a lot of non-vintage ones, uh, but this sold for $26.99. It was on sale uh, and this for four bucks. So very happy to move that. These, I found a group of these. Uh, when I was out thrifting a couple months ago, and they were all different brands, but they're all like that basic like 511 Tactical Series Teflon type, like EMS worker pants. Uh, they were all new with tags. I picked them up for four bucks a piece. Don't be fooled by this high sale price. I had these on sale for 30% off the other day. I was trying to jumpstart things, and I took a best offer for like $24.99. Um, but still, I was in them for four bucks. Very happy to move them. Um, Especially because they're ladies, they, women's versus men's, just women sell slower for me, usually. So decent flip there. They went uh, flat rate for about six bucks. Actually, let me show you guys the tag. You probably want to see the tag on those. Like, oops. There you go. There's the tag. I'm not sure what the used resale value on these. I didn't really vet them, but the new tags once you knew pretty decent. So keep your eyes peeled. Yep, I guess I include the other Lucky Brand jeans. Uh, so these are Lucky Brand Billy Straight. Um, they're just you know size 16 standard women's jean. Um, sold these for again, it was like that 22.99 price point on sale, full price. Was very happy to move them, um, and in them for five bucks. And they even had lightwear on the cuffs I put here in the description. Uh, but in them for five, shipped them flat rate for six, and uh, so decent profit there. <clears throat> I'm getting close to that home run item, guys. So hang with me. Uh, this was actually pretty cool. So this was a merino wool and angora rabbit hair blend sweater. I had never seen that before, this angora rabbit hair blend. I didn't even see that material before until now. Uh, but since finding it, I found a couple of these. Uh, but in either case, I took a best offer of $22 for this uh, sweater. It was very lightweight. It actually went first class um, in this for $4. Just a black cable knit type sweater. It's got the purple pony on it. Let me see if I can show you guys the tag here. Oh, that's even a bad tag picture too, but you can see it's like 10% Angora rabbit hair and then the 90% Merino wool. So um, it just goes to show you too, guys, we're in the middle of summer here and 
I got a sweater like this selling. You know, stuff will sell even off season, so it's okay to be a long tail seller and have that. That being said, I have definitely made the mistake of not having enough summer items in preparation for the summer season, which I will correct next year moving into the summer season is trying to get more shorts and those type of things. So uh, something to keep in mind, though, that's good to have all seasons worth of inventory because you never know when it's going to sell. I've right, got two more items here. Uh, English Laundry, another slow seller for me, but it does sell to the right buyers. This is like a blue striped embroidered is a French cuff styled uh, kind of like a club clubby looking shirt. Um, English laundry still sells. You just sell for really, really high money, like 30, 40, 50 bucks. Um, markets come way down on it. Uh, but they still have some, you know, there are buyers who are still looking for this type of shirt. Here's your tag. Um, so I still pick it up when I find it. I get them for $4 and I can get anywhere from 18 to 25, 26. <laughs> so for me, it's definitely worth it to do that. Um, and to pick those up being a long tail seller. So here is the home run item of the, uh, probably in a, while, in a while this was on sale <clears throat> again i had it on like super sale so this was down to like 200 and some dollars on sale i guess no it was like 310 or it was like in the high twos low threes was on sale i had a buyer and i've had a lot of people inquire about it over the last couple months i picked this new tag suit up for ten dollars at a thrift store and uh, you can see there it's got the everything's new on it and it's just like a black pinstripe suit. It is three buttons, so it's a little less popular of the style. Uh, two button definitely would have been even better. But I got this for 10 bucks. Sales were slow, and on June 2nd, this guy starts messaging me like the middle of the night. I happened to wake up and saw that I had the message. I responded to him. He asked a question about the shoulder measurement. Responded to him. We went back and forth with some messages, and then he sends me an offer of $179. And so I counter with $199 and just basically like, hey, can you meet me at $200? Some offering free shipping. I knew he was in California. Don't hear from him for like 12, 14, maybe 16 hours. And then I'm starting to kick myself because I'm like, all right, my sales are slow. I had a chance to flip a $10 item for 180 bucks. Like, what were you doing countering for $20 more? And then you start to do that second guess thing. You get ticked at yourself. Like, and so I, what I did is actually I just sent him a message and I was like, hey, like, had time to think about it. Like, I'm willing to unload it for 180 if you still want it. If so, just, you know, counter my offer with 180 and I'll accept and we'll move. Looking forward to doing business with you. Within like an hour of me sending that message, he sends the counter, I accept, and boom, we're done. It is sold in the second. He definitely has it by now. It was shipped priority, so he should have it. Still, fingers crossed, knocking on wood, no return yet. Um, but yeah, definitely biggest sale I've had in quite a while at 180 bucks. Uh, sold a couple suits for a little over 100 you know, the last couple months, but this is definitely the biggest score so far. So um, pretty excited about that. Definitely needed it for this month. Need a couple more of these. Um, but you know, that's what, that's what I got going on guys. Hopefully this was valuable for you. Let me pop over the chat and see what you have going on here. All right. Let's see what we got here, guys. Hopefully, uh, these sales were helpful to you. Love it. Yeah, it looks like some people are commenting. They've had like the, the counter offer regrets. I, I have that occasionally. It's kind of a, it stinks sometimes. Um, and I've said is a real model better than a mannequin for sales pictures. If so, why? Um, I don't know if it's better. I would guess that a live model, if I think the caveat with a live model is does the live model fit in the clothes well, right? Cause all these different sizes are so different. You need to make sure that they sit there. Um, but yeah, that's, I guess that's kind of my answer. I just stick with the mannequins. It's easier. Hey chef, honey, how you doing guys? And hi to everyone in the chat. I'm not going to call everyone individually, but I really appreciate you guys stopping in. We got 81 watching live. Thank you very much. Uh, Thomas, uh, you want a Suits brand video? I will do one. Not a problem. Um, I actually have a couple on cue. While I'm going to be out of town, Thomas, I've been re pre-recording videos for that suit series I've been doing. I did one on, uh, I think I did one on materials. I did one on patterns. I'm going to do one on suit styles, and then I'm going to do a big one on suit brands. Um, so I will, the, not this week, but the week after I'm in Punta Cana, I'm going to schedule the videos to come out. So each day will be a couple of videos in those series for you guys. And I will make sure, Thomas, just for you, that there is a suit brands video in there, suit and blazers and sport coats for you. Um, New Frontier say just sold a Brooks Brothers Madison earlier today. Yeah, love finding Brooks Brothers Madison. Very nice. Um... Easy Money just asks, when you have clothes you cannot ship first class, do you use a padded flat rate or do you have uh, to use a small flat rate box? 
Um, I use the flat rates envelopes. Um, depends what type of item it is. If I know it won't be damaged and I can fit it in the um, cardboard one, I'll fit it in the cardboard flat rate. If I think that could cause some damage, I'll make sure I use the padded flat rate. But I very rarely use a, I don't think I ever use flat rate boxes. I'll use regional A and regional B boxes pretty frequently, but um, not flat rate. Uh, let me see what else. Um, Jane Garns is not getting any picture or sound. I think you might just want to refresh um, your feed and it should come through, I hope. Uh, let's see what else we got. Christopher just asked a question. At what point did you get your storage unit for your inventory? How many items did you have? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, so when I was in New York, I had a three-bedroom house in the basement. So I had all my inventory in there, and I had about seven to 800 items. And when I moved to Charlotte, I moved into a one-bedroom apartment, so I didn't really have a choice. So pretty much forced me to get a storage unit as soon as I got down here. Um, so I had about eight to 900 items when I made the plunge of the storage unit. Now I'm, a, I'm coming close to 2,000 items, and I actually just did the calculation. I almost pulled the trigger on the Anchor Store because of the 25% discount they're giving, but I'm still just like, I need to have closer to like 24, 2,500 to make it worth it. Um, so I'm just gonna hold off on that for right now. But yeah, Chris, I mean, for me, my answer to that is always like, if your personal space is so cluttered with inventory that you're not being productive or it's cutting into it, then that's the time to switch over to a storage unit. Like to me, that's how I operate. Like if it's too cluttered and, and overwhelming, I'm just not gonna get stuff done. So that's usually when, like that was when it was right for me. Um, Magnify just asked, what's the difference between a regional A and regional B? That is a fantastic question. I have no idea. I'm just gonna be completely honest with you. All I know is that when I go to ship my item, you can click on the adjust the type and it will tell you what's the cheapest option. And so I always just pick based on that. I'm not actually sure what that is. If someone knows in the chat, I'd love to actually hear that explanation. Um, let's see what else we got. Yeah, so Christopher, you got a five by five for 75 bucks. That's pretty good. I'm, I have a 10 by 20 and I pay, I have two 10 by 20s and I'm paying $298. So it's like 75 cents a square foot, I think. Um, uh, in the sun by the beach, why do I use a regular camera instead of an iPhone? Um, at the time, I was very efficient with loading pictures from my um, SD card on my computer and just kind of doing everything in batches. I have actually, in the last week, I've been using my iPhone in drafts, and I'm loving it. Uh, so even me, stubborn me, like I'm not, I'm not too proud to admit that if I have found a better process, it looks like the draft situation is best for me because I can actually add the pictures and set things live while I'm at work. So like all morning, I just prep, 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 take pictures, measure, and do drafts. And then when I get to work, I just load the pictures and send them live. So it's becoming really, really effective for someone who works full time and doing this part time. So I've actually used my iPhone now. Um, Easy Money said, do you think it's worth the investment on a mannequin and a backdrop? Um, hmm. I think that if you're on a shoestring budget, that you don't need either. You can flat lay, you can use natural light, you can use whatever you need to do to get your pictures during the time of day until you have the capital. Once you have the capital and you can afford it, I think it's definitely worth getting a mannequin. Backdrop should come after the mannequin because you always can use a flat colored wall. Um, I think both separate you as a seller. I think they can be more efficient in listing. I think it adds the quality, especially if you're asking for a higher price. Um, so yeah, I mean, I recommend it if your business model can afford it. I would say don't rush to get it and stretch your budget. You're better off investing in more inventory. Um, but when you think you can afford it, you definitely should you know, try to make the investment. Uh, glad, Dan, I'm glad that suit patterns video helped. I'm really happy about that. Uh, R1 said, how do you know if you can use a regional A? Um, it just tells you. I, I mean, like if you go to the shipping section, like when you go to ship your item, and you put in the weight, the dimensions, it has the address already on there. And it just tells you like a regional A is this much, regional B is this much, flat rates this much. Like you don't have to know where it goes. It just tells you what it will be. And then you can just select it. Um, what do we got here? Rick Day said regional A, regional A and B are the minimal weight to use. The sizes are also different. Gotcha, okay. Uh, Jameson, how do you ship your suits? Pretty much ship them in a poly bag. Um, 
I use the 12 by 15. Let's see if I got one nearby here. I can show you guys. Uh, I'll try to knock everything over here. I have these guys right here. Um, they have like the self seal, and I just stick them in here. I can fit both pieces in there without a problem. I buy these in bulk. Same with the uh, the like poly bags that come with it, uh, like the 12 by 15 clear poly bag flap locks. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I use. I have links in the description for that and mannequins and all the stuff I use in my business. If you're curious, uh, they are Amazon affiliate links, so I do get a little compensation if you do order through there. So definitely appreciate the support. They don't mark it up or anything. Um, but I have them in there for the ones that I use. Feel free to check that out. Uh, Robin said regional bees are bigger. Cool. That's good to know. I, and that makes sense because I use regional bees most of the time, it seems like. Um, Thomas says, I have a 5x5 five five extra space for $51, about to go to a 5x10 for $85. Awesome, Thomas. Moving up, leveling up, getting bigger space. That's awesome. Um, see you later, Clearing Clutter. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I think I'm not caught up with the chat here, trying to get, trying to catch up. Uh, Diana Ander said, so you don't ship a suit in a flat rate box. Regional A fits the pants too. Um, sometimes, most of my suits just go in the poly bag. Pretty much the poly bag only. I don't try to put it in a box. Um, I just send them in that, that poly bag. I send them priority. Usually they're three to four pounds. Cost in routine like eight and 14, 15 bucks, depending on what part of the country it's going to. Uh, Magnified TV said, I've never used regional boxes since I don't sell suits, but I'm going to start, so I ordered every box. Yeah. I really, really recommend having all the different types of boxes on hand. It can't hurt just to make sure that, you know, if one's cheaper to use, you at least you have it on hand, you know? Um, let me see. And then some of the bees said you need a climate control storage room in Miami because of the high humidity and heat, minus 10 by 15 at 239 a month and 40 minutes away. Wow. So that's interesting. I don't know anything about Florida climate, but it's really humid here in the summer, too. I know it's not Florida heat, but. I put everything in those 12 by 15 poly bags and I seal them with tape and then they go in a sealed plastic bin and that seems to work. I would be curious if that wouldn't work for you guys, for you even down there in that climate. I mean, just to see what Casey has to say about that, especially to being in Florida, but I mean, it gets hot here in the summer. We have, you know, those hundred degree stretches in humidity, like, and I don't have issues. So it's interesting. Uh, Sharon said, my links for the mailers are dead. That's not good. All right. I will, um, I will check them out after and make sure that they're working. Sorry about that. Give me when the, when the live feed ends, just give it a few minutes. It'll pop back up, and I'll make sure the links are working for you. I apologize about that, Sharon. Um, regional A box item weighs five pounds. It ships at two pound rate. Gotcha. That's an awesome explanation, Rick. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Chris, I appreciate the kind words, and I'm glad that it's motivating to you. Um, you know, honestly, sharing my YouTube channel has been really, it's been motivating both ways. Like, I get a lot from you guys and everyone who tunes in. I've learned so much from viewers, mistakes I was making, improvements I can make in my business. So I thank you to you guys for tuning in and giving your feedback on <laughs> all my processes and mistakes as I go. So I'm glad it's inspiring, though. Uh, what is the biggest thing you stuff into a padded flat rate? Uh, I've, usually blazers, I'd say, are the biggest that I you know, get into there. And Thomas says he keeps a uh, dehumidifier in the garage for listed stuff. That makes sense. Um, oh, Terry, good good call out there. So Terry just said, don't forget to use your store coupons for eBay. Um, you know, the quarter two is ending here soon, so make sure you use them. I buy tape with mine, as much tape as I can get, because I go through a lot of packing tape. And that's like, I think that's the best deal around to getting that much packaging tape. So yeah, you have till June 30th, so make sure you use them. Thank you, Terry. That's an awesome, awesome uh, tip there. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, Stacy said, "How do you get a blazer in a flat rate? Uh, you gotta have you gotta have some uh, gotta have some persistent fortitude to get it in there. Uh, Take some persuasion sometimes. I will say that because I prepackage in the plastic twelve by fifteen, and then I put it in the self seal, it makes it easier to slide in um, by itself. So just a little tip there." Um, all right, guys. Thor, better Barbie's asked how Thor is doing. He's our dog. He is great. He actually was cuddling me on the couch. That's why I, uh, I wanted to go live at 930, but he just was, he was having some, some one-on-one -on -one time with me. So I was enjoying hanging out with him on the couch. So it delayed me to start my video and I need to get to bed now. So, um, 
I will check my eBay. Oh, Sherry's just telling people to check your eBay email. Gotcha. Um, Kevin just said, when you get a customer messaging you about returning an item and you agree upon a partial refund, what is the best process? Do you get some eBay fees refunded when you give a partial refund? Um, so when you refund on, I always refund that to PayPal, or you can have them start a return and then you offer the partial refund, they agree to it, and then it should give you the fees back. Um, Easy Money said, I know you might not know off the top of your head, but how much did it cost to ship that sweater? Just curious because I bought 20, so I want an early estimate. Are you talking about the Polar Off Lens sweater? It was like uh, 12 or 13 ounces, so ship first class. Night Chef Honey, thanks for stopping in. All right, guys, I am going to wrap up. I'm sorry to cut this off. I have to chat with you all night, but I need to get some sleep. I am going to be sourcing and working out. we got tons of stuff to do before our trip this next weekend, so um, we need to get some good rest. Hope everyone's having an uh, awesome start to the weekend. I hope your sales are ramping up, and I hope everyone gets to get out and source and kill it and find all, lots of awesome stuff. Check me out on Instagram. For those of you looking for those links for the supplies I use, I will make sure they're working when this video ends. Sorry about any complications. Uh, appreciate your support as always. Have an awesome night, guys. Uh, great talking with you. Have a good night.